Danny's cabinet shop. This cabinet was going to be awesome, but uh, I had a staple come through the front, so I'm going to have to tear that putty out and reface it. It looks like crap. Um, yeah, that cabinet's a corner cabinet. That one took me a long time to make. This one I made, but I stained it. And I wasn't thinking, I was thinking, oh, the stain's going to dry lighter. No, that is a very dark cabinet. Let me show you the doors. I have uh, six doors or something like that. They're too dark. So um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to do how to make a cabinet, kitchen cabinet. This is the upper kitchen cabinet. And we'll start. This is cabinet grade plywood. This side's not, this side's sanded, but it's the bad side. This is the pretty side. Well, my foot's prints on it. Looks like this. Pretty plywood. I think I'll need about three sheets or two and a half. And first I'm going to do is cut my trim for the front. And that's an inch and a half. Why is it an inch and a half, you ask? Well, I, my brad gun can send, uh, shoot a two inch brad. That's max. So if an inch and a half, I can shoot from the top and it'll go into the trim piece and I won't have to use a pocket screwer, which I don't own. First thing you need to do before you cut is, uh, Find out how far your blade is from the end of your saw. I'm using a guide that will ensure I am do a straight cut. I'm not going to move here. I'm going to move it here when I actually cut. The first thing you want to do is you want to measure. And uh, it's an inch and a half from the blade. And we know the blade is one-eighth of an inch. The blade is one-eighth. So we want to do... When we cut an uh, inch, so we want to, we're going to cut a um, inch and a half piece for trim. We're going to make it. We'll make our line at a in, a three and one eighth. So right there, and then that way, that'll be exactly an inch and a half piece we cut off, because it's an inch and a half from here. The blade is an eighth of an inch, and uh, we want the piece to be an inch and a half. All right. So I know at least what I can get. Uh, this sheet of plywood I can get at least six trim pieces the three shelves the top the bottom the middle shelf and one side maybe two sides depending on how I cut it you want to try not to have much scrap when you're making a cabinet because this plywood is very expensive so we're at three and one eighth exactly three and one eighth exactly Check the middle. Three and one eighth. So we're good. All right, let's see if we did our work right. And that is exactly inch and a half. Check this other end, just make sure. Exactly inch and a half. As you can see, I've been cutting a lot and uh, that sawdust. Don't want that in your lungs. It's bad for you. Anyway, got all my trim pieces cut. I actually cut more than I need because I'm going to be making other cabinets too. I got six pieces of one and a half inch trim for the fronts of the cabinets. Some people use oak. That way you don't have this edge, but I don't mind that edge. So uh, next I'm going to cut one of the shelves that goes in between the cabinet, uh, the middle one, or the, well, or the bottom or the top. And that is one foot exactly. And then that will leave me with uh, a little more than around 26 inches of wood this way, 26 and inches and a half, and then an uh, eight foot piece. And I think I can get all the doors and the sides out of one sheet of plywood. And then I can get uh, the other two shelves and the back out of one sheet of plywood. So I might actually be able to do it with two sheets of plywood in total, which would be awesome. All right. I cut either the top, bottom, or middle shelf. So now I'm going to do the end pieces. And this piece of plywood I should get all my doors out of and end pieces. It's going to be 23 inches and a half by um, 1 foot 3 fourths of inch. So I got this set to 25 and 1 eighth. So it'll do a 23 and a half inch cut. And then I'll cut it again and do my end pieces out of it. So uh, I'm going to cut it and I'll film it. Three and a half. 
just cut one side of the cabinet. That is 12 and 3 fourths. And for future reference, to cut 12 and 3 fourths with your guide, which is inch and a half from 12 and 3 fourths plus 1 eighth of an inch, you need to cut 14 and 3 eighths. You need to make your marks 14 and 3 eighths for your guide to be. Uh, remember that. So let's see if I can get one more out, door out of this little piece right here. I mean, not door, but side. I'll have two, the two sides ready. And I'll start on the back and uh, more shelves on another piece of plywood and keep this piece of plywood for uh, doors. All right. The back and the bottom shelf and the top shelf have to be the same size exactly. So I went ahead and put this bar across. I'm going to clean off this end first. And uh, so it needs to be 82. No, it needs to be um, 70. No. 80 and a half inches the shelves do in the back so I set this to 79 inches because my I know my guard goes to here an inch and a half away from the blade where the blade will be and since I'm measuring on this side of the blade I don't have to factor in the blade into the cut so it's not 79 one eighth it's uh, 79 inches and it'll be exactly uh, where the mark where the guide is is 79 inches and the cut will be exactly 80 and a half inches Well, I just made a mistake. It's going to cost me another sheet of plywood. Well, not all of it, just a little bit of it. I cut to, uh, uh, I put the, the trim piece of metal, the guide, to 13 and 1 8th. When really, I should have put it to 13 and 5 8 And so this is a half inch off. And so uh, this piece will be used for something else, sadly. I got the back cut, the sides, the three shelves, including the bottom and the top. Well, actually, that's not the back. This is the back. There you go. That's uh, what I'm going to cut the doors out of. I got the wood for the face cut. Six pieces of it. More than enough. So tomorrow I'll build the carcass of the cabinet, face it out, and then I'll cut my doors out of this. And then we can putty the places that need it and sand it and stain it. So, yeah. I got the basic, basic carcass of the cabinet built. I did have a couple staples. Well, Brad's coming through the top, but no one's going to see that, so that's all right. I don't see any that came in on the inside, so that's good. Go ahead and start the trimming out process. Da da da. Yep, let's start trimming it out. Get my uh, saw out here and get some trim. As the sun goes down, this cabinet is now faced out. Um, those are all 12 inch doors, except for this one is 11 and a half. So it'll be six doors all together. It's, um, I'm going to put screws going in the back of the shelves just for more security from the back. But uh, tomorrow's going to be all about wood putty. Wood putty and uh, sanding once that dries. I'll do the wood putty early in the morning and then staining, hopefully. I don't know if I'll get to polyurethane, but I'll at least try to get the staining tomorrow. Hopefully, I can leave it outside. Oh, for uh, mounting up here, I put the brads going from down here. They're uh, two inch brads. Two on the bottom, two on the top, one in the middle. All the way across. That's pretty, plenty strong for this cabinet. I say it looks pretty good to me. It'll look a lot better once it gets polyurethane stained and sanded. It's going to look good. Hopefully I can leave it out here overnight. I don't think it's going to rain. Yep. Alright, I'm going to stain it now. I've sanded the cabinet. A little bit of the cloth. Wipe it in.
So here I got our cabinet. I went ahead and sanded it again and stained it again. I'm trying to see. This is where the cabinet place to the cabinet grade plywood. They actually patched the place in it before they sold the plywood, which doesn't show up until you stain it. So that looks kind of obvious, but the door is going to cover it for the most part. Um, yeah, I got a couple places like that. I don't know if the camera picked those up, but I see them. But I went ahead and sanded it and stained it again to try to hide those imperfections. But I don't think that worked. If I'm going to get an ear swab, but I'm going to take a ear swab with a stain on it and try to dab it onto there. You can see definitely on this end where the nails were. So uh, I'll work on that a little bit. Uh, the other cabinet I made that I stained way too dark, my learner cabinet, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Mount the doors on it and put in a pantry. It's a nice cabinet. It's almost uh, eight feet. No, it's almost seven feet long. So it's a pretty good cabinet. Dip a little bit in the stain. See the air swab with a little bit of stain on it. I should wipe some of that off. I don't want to drip. I'm trying to cover that uh, wood putty carefully. But right, here's that uh, first cabinet I made. I got it. Uh, well, let me find a good place screwed up to the roof and it also screwed uh, every 16 inches where there's a stud and that one covers the washer and almost the hot water heater pretty good so that's a, it's a nice big cabinet I couldn't get it up square exactly the roof but close enough so that's good and now uh, I hear I got the ones that are gonna be kitchen cabinets all the doors this is the tops this is actually dry uh, first I did a coat a polyurethane and that brought up all the burrs or anything and you sand that off and then it becomes really smooth with two more coats of polyurethane so all, all together three but one was sanded off so yeah real smooth and glass like and uh i use foam brushes so i don't leave any trails like with a bristle brush this one very smooth I stained the bottoms, but I didn't polyurethane them. I just did that in case someone saw the bottoms. It's not a lighter color. Very smooth. Oh, yeah. This will be a nice cabinet. So here's the finished product. Cabinet hanging on the wall. Uh, with that other cabinet, this is a 10-foot segment of cabinet. Um, I did my best to line up all the doors. That was really hard. The um, handles are the cheapest ones I could find, and find 36 of them because I know I'm going to be building a bunch more cabinets. I try and building one now. I got screws, three inch screws going into studs. Um, I've tested it. It's not going nowhere. I can hang on it. I actually did once. Um, it's solid. I should have spent a little bit more time lining up the doors. You can see this one's a little bit lower. I could adjust it later. Uh, but cabinet is finished. There's corner one. The upper is anyway. I would say man hours, sanding, uh, building a cabinet didn't take me that long at all. It's just sanding, uh, polyurethane, sanding. I, I, I stain, then I sand, then I stain again, then I polyurethane, then I sand, and then I do two more coats of polyurethane. But it's a, it's a like glass finish that is just smooth to the tuss, touch that I did here, and I like it. I think it'll protect the cabinet well. Underneath the cabinet, I, I didn't want to waste time sanding and staining, so I just put one coat of stain underneath. You're not going to see that much, but anyway. Cabinet is finished. If I was to do it again, you can see where the uh, I puttied the brads. I would sand that well. In fact, I'm doing it again. I'll show you guys in a second. But here's the finished product. 